Hindu beheaded for defending blasphemous remarks against Prophet Muhammad. On June 28th, a Hindu shop owner named uh, Kanhaya Lal was brutally murdered in the city of Udarpur in the Indian state of Rajasthan by two Muslim men over an alleged social media post. There is video footage capturing the two assailants entering the tailor shop, posing as customers moments before they murdered the shopkeeper by slitting his throat. The attackers filmed the entirety of the violent crime and shared it on social media. After the attack, the accused shared a video admitting to the murder and declaring that they committed the act, the action due to the shop owner's social media post that allegedly supported the former BJP national spokesperson, Nupur Sharma. Last month, Sharma made controversial statements about the Prophet Muhammad on TV, entangling India in a diplomatic crisis. The two accused men were caught and arrested in a neighboring district on the night of the incident. The videos of the murder and those posted by the perpetrators circulated on social media, increasing intercommunal tensions and promoting author prompting authorities to suspend internet services temporarily. As a result of the escalating tensions and protests, the Rajasthan government imposed a curfew. High-level security and police forces were deployed to maintain public order across the state. So this is one of the biggest stories to come out of India in the past week. So the Nurpur Sharma drama, or also known as like the Prophet Remarks Rao, has continued to just embroil the nation. And this isn't the first death that has been caused by this incident, but it is one of the latest. And what makes it particularly significant this time is the Muslim on Hindu crime aspect of it, where previously the people who died as a result of this ongoing controversy were Muslim teenagers who were shot by the police. Um, this is, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. It's just horrific. It's just absolutely horrific. I mean, what can you say? These people are deranged Islamists who decided to go after some random dude just because allegedly he made a post that supported Nupur Sharma. Now, I want to clarify something really quickly. There is differing reports about this post made by the Hindu tailor. I believe his full name is Kanhaya Lal Tili. Um, and so some people say he didn't actually make these posts. Some people say that the posts were actually from his son, but made through his account. There's a, I haven't been able to find any screenshots of what was allegedly said anyways. So there's some people saying like, he didn't actually even post anything. Like he was completely quote unquote innocent. Even if he had done it, it wouldn't have justified this. But I just want to, you know, note that because that's important. There is differing information about what was said versus did he actually defend it? It's hard to confirm. Um, very okay. important that Susanna, like I want people to attention that Susanna says, quote, unquote, innocent, okay? Because if he did post this, like, he's still innocent, like, because people are like, oh, he didn't deserve this because he didn't post these things. Like, what are you talking about? It's okay to support, you know, Nupur Sharma. Like, she, he didn't do anything wrong, even if he posted. So we just, the fact that we're saying maybe his, his son posted it is just so that we could report the news that people are saying that this is a possibility, not that... We're defending him only because like you know i just want i know that's mm -hmm. obvious to a lot of people but some people don't get it like whether he did it or his son did it obviously this is like he's innocent but yeah go on no it's it's definitely worth like stating and reiterating um i mean there's just there's there's a lot of allegations that these men who did this had um actual ties to islamist terrorist organizations i'm using the word terrorist because youtube doesn't like the real t word you know we're talking about people who do violent radical extremism okay um including allegations that maybe they were supporters of lashkar e taiba like my one of my most hated organizations on earth like my passion of hatred towards lashkar e taiba runs deep <laughs> um and or maybe ISIS. Again, it's difficult to confirm these things, but there's been a lot of like on and off reporting about this. Um, it's heartbreaking. And the Indian government has actually been pushing the big social media companies to crack down on posts of anyone glorifying or encouraging this crime, which I think I'm 
you know, just really reiterating to social media companies to be thorough and enforce their own community standards is, you know, like, in, it's so needed in this case. Like, I can't even imagine. Um, yeah, it's, I don't even know what else to say. It's horrible. I mean, when, what, when you heard about this, what was your reaction? What, um, before, the, what's going to happen to them? Like, they are the people who did this. Oh, I mean, they're in judicial custody. They, I mean, okay. they're, there's a huge investigation going on. They're being investigated for terrorism. They, I mean, people are calling for them to be hanged. How uh, this goes well, further is not entirely clear, but they're bringing and, the full force of the law against them. That's for sure. Any, as they should. Is there, is there any celebration of this, recorded celebration of this within the Muslim community in India? Um, I have not seen large demonstrations in favor of these murderers, to my knowledge. I have heard people talking about posts that encourage or glorify it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how widespread that support is, however. There, um, despite the fact that Rajasthan put the entire state on, like, curfew, there was a protest where thousands of people, you know, protested against this murder. And that was allowed to still occur. Um, uh, numerous right-wing activists were actually arrested at those protests, which I thought was interesting. Um, but yeah, this, this is just like shocked the nation. Like India is okay. reeling from this. Okay. My, my reaction, my initial reaction is like, is that how much this can escalate? Like, is this the tipping point or is this just the beginning? That's my first thought okay and i don't know like are we like are we gonna head to more and more of this happening because like this itself is going to fuel um radicalism from the other side as well and then they, they, they're just gonna feed each other but i don't know what ends what ends these cycles i don't know how these cycles end but so uh, uh, we'll see i mean just to be clear most Hindus and most Muslims in India, the, not just most, okay, the vast, vast, vast majority of Hindus and Muslims are shocked by acts like this in India, right? They're like, this is crazy. I don't know. Let me know if you agree with this in the live chat, okay? Uh, but, okay, how? what are people are saying? I, I start some comments in the live chat. Do you want to read them? Because I want to react to them. Um, yeah, Oxymoron is saying that this Taylor... Uh, Kanhaya probably didn't support Nupur Sharma. His son did. Again, like I said, there's a lot of conflicting information on this. Just trying to be responsible in how we talk about it. Um, uh, Shriyash Singh is saying, I and almost everyone have seen the videos. Yeah, just brutal. He's, something I don't remember is saying they even filmed it while murdering. Um, did, did you see the film? I've seen stills from it. I haven't seen the full thing. Hmm. So they show the, the entire thing, the beheading? Some of the images that I have seen come from, like, CCTV footage. Oh. From, it, lo it looks but, like it's, like, from inside the shop where I've seen footage of his body on the street. But they themselves filmed what they did. Mm -hmm. These people, yeah. And then they openly, like, praised it afterwards. Like, they were super proud of what they did. Hmm. Wielding these huge freaking knives. Um... Oxymoron is saying yesterday another one allegedly got stabbed in Maharashtra for supporting the Prasharma, not the latest. Well, I haven't heard about this one. If uh, I'm very interested in learning about this, so please suggest this news in our news suggestions channel on Discord because uh, I'd like to check it out and maybe cover it next week. Um, especially if it was yesterday, that's too quick for us to turn it around and cover today. So we'll probably do it next week. Forever Stormy is saying, Hindutva has created fertile ground for Islamist recruitment in India. That's the larger issue. This will only get worse unless Modi stops the insanity. What do you I think don't about agree. That? I don't think it's fair to say this, uh, Stormy. I think like this is kind of, this is blaming the victim. I said, no, that would be collectivist if I say that. But I just say like it would, I mean, even if it's true, I've, I think it's it just comes across as too obsessive over just like I mean even when it, just think about how that comes across as right like even when 
you you come as very you we will come across as very so anti hindutva okay and so trying to cover for muslims as even when you see muslims committing crimes on hindus we still point to hindus and we're like oh this is still your fault okay yeah that's insane. like yeah i mean like well yeah i mean no i can see like why would okay so i think it's important it's not insane because it might even be true okay but i'm just saying it's important to take moments to i mean if even if you want to show that hindus are creating fertile ground for this i think the right moment to point that out is not when somebody's attack has done a violent act against hindus you know what i mean so i think like i used to not believe in this i used to think like whatever is true you just say it no matter when right and i changed my mind on this i think like there is you have to be mindful of how it's perceived like hindu like if you're a hindu and you're looking for us as somebody who will condemn an attack on Hindus when something like this happens and they come to you like, okay, these people seem to be f acting like they're fair. They're like, oh, we go after Islam Muslim Islamic attacks. We go after Hindu uh, radicalism, Christian radicalism. And they're like, okay, this is your moment to show us that you are going to condemn these this Islamic attack on Hindus. And they come here and they see that even at the moment like this, we're like, oh, Hindutva, Hindutva, Hindutva did this. Okay, they're like, Where's your where's your balanced coverage on this, right? So I think this is not the moment to maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is. Maybe I don't know. I have to think about this. Maybe we, we should wait a little bit before we go back to saying, oh, Hindutva is creating fertile ground for this. I don't know. What do you think? I tend to agree with you. I basically agree with you. Like, it's worth having that discussion, but it is not the most important thing to talk about right after this happened. In my opinion, like, it should be like our first through seventh priority should be condemning and talking about the problems that gave rise to this Islamist violence. Like, let, let's focus that on that first. And then, like, once we do a deep dive, like, fully holding all those factors accountable and naming them, then we can be like, okay, so what was the environment that led this to, like, kind of give, Let like, me say this. come up? You know what? The number one environment, the, the number one factor, here's, here's what I would say. Even if Hindutva is responsible somewhat, okay, then the first, second, and third and maybe up till ninth factor in creating an environment for an attack like this to be able to happen is Islam. Okay. It's Islamic ideology that provides the excuse for a crime like this to happen. Okay. So even if Hindutva is responsible, it would be, I don't know, way down the list. Okay. You don't see this level of violence, this level of radicalism in almost any other religion. True. Enough said. Yeah. And I think it would be super hypocritical for us to be pointing the finger first at Hindutva when, when Samuel Apati was beheaded in France, we didn't immediately turn and point the finger first at French laïcité and the French system of secularism, that'd be super yeah. hypocritical of us. And like the double standard standard would be so glaring. It's like, oh, you, the first thing you want to do is point to the majority, like when it comes to India, but when it comes to France, you guys like are so gung-ho. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I think that'd be really inconsistent and, of us. And also when you see the same level of oppression on other people, right? Like for example, if you see the same level of oppression on Christians, okay? Christians don't go and react like this and cut people's heads off. Right? Like, again, I'm not, not all Muslims. Not nowadays. Okay? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just, yeah. Well, even back then, it wasn't because, okay, that's a bigger, bigger debate. But again, okay, so this is, uh, this is mostly an Islamic issue. Okay. So even if you create the same environment where Muslims are living under in, in India, you don't see this reaction from any other community. Anyways, but let's, um, let's there was one more, more um, comment I wanted to highlight. 
Something I don't remember is saying even Modi is silent. Didn't expect that from the prime minister. Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to really see why the BJ, where, why Hindutva supporters like the BJP is completely feckless and cowardly. What? Has Modi given a comment to any of these major international crises that his country is in, like for the past month? Not to my knowledge. Does he comment on literally anything of importance within India? It doesn't seem like it. How, are you, how is he going to remain, remain silent on this in particular when it's like a slam dunk for his narrative and his rhetoric? I don't get it. I think I get Does the strategy. About anything? Okay, I think I get this. Uh, I think I get his strategy. Okay, I think he's like he wants to come across as like, hey, listen, I am consistently silent about all of these. Okay, because I think if he comments on one of them, then people will, are gonna look for the line. Do you know what I mean? Like people are like, we're like, okay, you 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 weren't silent about this, but you were silent about that. So what's the difference between this and that? Why you talked on this and you don't talk on that? You know. So I think he's like deciding to just be like, I am a prime minister that doesn't talk about these things. So don't try to guess my politics based on what I'm talking about because I am completely consistent. Zero commentary on everything. I don't believe that. Like when has he cared about consistency anyways? Like Whoa. his history doesn't give that impression at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> You know, yeah, I like hmm. I, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I mean, he he does. I, was, I know that example is like too much to get into now. He does comment on things. It's it's through. Okay, but like, when it comes to condemning things, like when it comes to like, oh, I condemn this. Oh, I condemn that. Right. Like if he enters that world, he might think like, okay, this is not this is a this is a game that I can't win at. You know what I mean? People are going to be like, oh, so you, you have entered the arena of condemning things. Well, here's a list, sir, for, for, for you to condemn things. And he's like, you know what? I am not going to condemn anything. Maybe he's like, why do I even need to condemn this? This is so obviously bad. Yeah, Again, I'm not defending uh, his silence. I'm just saying maybe this is, this is the thought process. Because like there must be a thought process behind his silence because it's not like hard to condemn this. Like they must have a reason for why they're not condemning it like there must i'm just trying to figure out what's the reason it's so weird to me it's so weird to me it makes him come across as so cowardly and like pathetic and uninvolved and not caring when he's yeah. supposed to be like this lion for mother india where's the passion where's the care where are you talking about what matters to the people of your nation I, it, I don't get it. He's, to me, it comes across as so weak. Mm. There I are mean, some juicy yeah. comments about um, the, the people being BGP members. Is that like, what is this all about? I'm not going to yeah. highlight that because the person who said that is incredibly not credible. Okay. Which one of them? Because a couple of people said that. I heard that somewhere as well. Actually, I've heard like guys, people who we know. Can you could can you tell us something about the guys who did this being BJP members? Is this like a real thing? You're saying that the perpetrators how... were supporters of the BJP. Yeah, uh, some people are saying that. Mm. I don't know if it's true. This is I, an I interesting. Saw that... oh. I saw that in my feed as well. But yeah, go on. This is an interesting comment from D. D is saying, I'm pissed that Nippur is getting the sole blame and no Muslim country has said a peep about this murder. Oh my God, that's another good point, D. But why would it, why would like the Gulf countries feel compelled to talk about like a crime that happened domestically in India? I completely understand what? why they feel compelled to talk about an insult to the prophet. I mean, I think it's dumb, but from their perspective, it makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, well, that the point is that their perspective is stupid. Like, yeah. the, the <laughs> I mean, the but the commentary on the prophet was also done in another country. So, like, the idea of like we need to speak on this thing that didn't happen within our borders because because you are you have a claim over the entire Islamic world, even outside of the borders where you're supposed to have authority over. Like, what? 
Like, that's not your country, you know? So, anyways. Oh, see? Um, even, even Bengali Hindu is saying this. They were seen with BJP Muslim members. Okay, that's not enough solid intel for me. Um, mm -hmm. So, wait, this is interesting. <laughs> This is so funny. Forever Stormy is saying condemning fetuses and defending Modi. Is this even our Armin? Bring back our Armin. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to provide a counter. Uh, wait, condemning. Wait, what are you talking? Wait, hold on a second. Condemning fetuses. I've always been anti-fetus. This is Armin. The Modi part might be like new, but the fetus part is always. I'm. I've been very consistent on that. Someone go check his temperature. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so needless to say, um, the whole prophet remarks row is far from being over. This is going to continue to snowball. And um, we're going to be following up on the story, both what happens with both both to see what happens with these perpetrators and i'm very curious to see about the results of any investigations into um their connections but also in terms of yeah other people who are the victims of vigilante violence because of their support for nipur sharma or um yeah just how this continues to evolve Okay, I, I saw some other commentary about them being BGP members. Some people are saying that they were just friends with other people, close to other people who are BGP members. And being a BGP member doesn't mean you share their ideology. Some people just do it for money and power. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see as more. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this new story is something that we're going to continue to uh, do commentary on. Like, it's going to have... Uh, ripple effects going into the future like just mm -hmm. like the Nupur Sharma event like it wasn't just one news item that stopped it's going to be like a reaction to this and the reaction to a reaction to this and it's going to continue right yeah in terms but of anyways, their any affiliation that the perpetrators had to the BJP I'm not going to comment on that or one way or another because I haven't read any of that or confirmed it myself so you had an Instagram post for this or do you want me to highlight that or no oh shoot I forgot about that that would actually be good, but we've kind of been going at this for a while. It's really interesting. Basically, I follow this account on Instagram called The Liberal Take, and they're actually one of the few, like, legitimately, well, pretty consistent, like, liberal Indian voices that I really agree with. Um, not all the time, but most of the time. They're just the most consistent and not, like pandering to Islamists, whatever, whatever. Anyways, they, they made this whole slide deck basically talking about their opinion on this and going after the problems with Islam, like going after the problems in the environment that kind of like led to this thing. Um, I don't know. It was, it was interesting. I thought it was well-written. Um, uh, wait, I just, I just went we'll to go speak, back on page. Uh, Okay. Yeah. yeah, they're saying it's high time for Muslims to realize that an integral contributing factor to Islamophobia are incidents like these. And for God, and please, for God's sake, stop blaming atheism by using the murderers have no religions line. Normalize blasphemy. Blasphemy is no crime. Violence is not the answer. Hmm. I don't like the word Islamophobia here, but I'm going to ignore it. I'm not. You understand the point today. they're making. Yes. Yes, I understand. Um, I'm not going to be picky because that will be another rant. Um, okay. Uh, Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Abhabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.